Tsunami, fires, cyclone, flood, nuclear wars and hackers can cause havoc with the written or digital records. Most of the ancient world records have been lost or destroyed. The mass-produced and durable coins are indeed the only evidence that survives. The history is written by the victors. Might of the conquerors have the power to shape historical narratives through school and textbooks, public iconography, movies and a range of other mediums. Free India, since 72 years, is no exception. Literature, relics and heritage of minorities is being distorted, destroyed or eradicated. Foundation diggers on metal detectors have found hordes of coins buried in the ground, embedded in the walls and in many unexpected places such as old pianos. Numismatics and epigraphers studying the inscriptions come up with the missing links in the true history and heritage. Following the teaching of 10 living Sikh Gurus from Guru Nanak in the 15th century to Guru Gobind Singh in 18th century, Sikhism in Indian subcontinent evolved to become the Khalsa Order of Saint Soldiers. Hindustan's first war of independence against the Mughal occupation was led by Guru Gobind Singh. His small but resolute band of few thousands Khalsa army in 1704 fought the millions of Mughals from Anandpur Fort. Sikh coins professionals revealed a wide choice of coins as markers of milestones of Sikh history. The list includes Banda's first Sikh Republic coins, missiles, the Khalsa Confederacy led by Jassa Singh Aluwalia's Lahore occupation of 1765 AD, Multans overrun by missiles 1772 and Amritsar victory 1775 AD, missiles ruled and minted from 1760 to 1801. Later crowning of Maharaja Ranjit, 1801, Victor of Amritsar, 1805, Moro Shahi or Arsiwala, 1805-6, Multan claimed, 1818, Kashmir taken, 1819, Conquest of Peshawar, 1834, Dera Nimak or Salt Mines, 1835, Gold, Single and Double, Round and Square Mohurs, Fractional, Square, hexagonal and rare pictorial coins. Actually, there are two different copies of pictorial coins in British Museum. It is called pictorial as there is an image of Maharaja Ranjit Singh offering flowers to Guru Nanak Ji. For the same reason that it has an image of Guru Nanak, Maharaja Ranjit did not allow its minting for circulation. It should not be called a coin even as it was just a sample or a specimen. Maharaja never gave permission to mint such a coin. Counter marked with Khanda symbols were recommended by some. In fact, by 1824 AD, Sikh coins was the currency prevalent in the vast Sikh empire from Ladakh to Sindh, from Afghanistan to eastern Himalayas. General Zalard and Ventura of the famous French Legion that once paraded under a French tricolor found an employment to train and modernize Khalsa army under Sikh Kingdom, superpower of the day. They marched under the Khalsa flags carrying an effigy of Guru Gobind Singh and Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh Maru. Within a short time, more than 40 Europeans from 13 different countries were employed in ever-expanding Sikh empire that stood firm against Mughals, British and Maratha power and formed a buffer state against Afghanistan, China and Russia. Herlan Josia, a spy and double agent came from Philadelphia and joined East India Company as a doctor. Before we find him working for Shah Suja in Kabul as a secret agent trying to form net trouble for Dos Mohammed. He joined Ranjit who appointed him the governor of Gujarat. After seven years he moved back to join Dost Mohammed enemy of Ranjit Singh. Finally, when run out of employers, returned to Philadelphia, raised his own regiment at the outbreak of civil war there. He died in San Francisco where he was practicing medicine in 1871 again. Such was the secular rule of Sarkar e Khalsa that out of total 10 governors in Kashmir during Ranjit's rule, last two were Muslims, five were Hindus, and three Sikhs from 1819 to 1846 AD. In his army, while Sikh troops were the core of the army, Hindus were part of the infantry. The artillery units were predominantly Muslims. More recently, 
Year 1978 AD saw the constant discrimination against the visible minority giving way to surge in sick sentiments, but resulting in mass killings of small, only 2%, but an influential community. The wounded sick psyche fueled the resurgence of interest in Sikh history and heritage. Collectors, numismatists, authors and historians from beyond geographical boundaries where Sikhism originated. Also felt the need to research and write about the Sikh coins, history and heritage. 69 years after freedom, Sikhs of Punjab dared to install a statue of the most secular Maharaja Ranjit Singh only after France installed the first in St. Lopez to honor the memory of Maharaja, the benevolent employer. Sikh coins were using legends with tributes to gurus and God from minting the first coin in 1710 to the last coin in 1849. America began to trust God or so to say that, in God we trust, first appeared on United States two cent coins in 1864 about 15 years after the annexation of Sikh nation and on paper money, they used the phrase in 1957. The rise of interest in Sikh coins and scarcity resulted in replication efforts. Even the Punjab government could not afford to display genuine Sikh coins in Toshkana of Gobind Garth Fort. Goods fakes were acquired for public consumption. The big inventory of rare Sikh coin shows on these papers from Gallery Baradari. Shish Mahal, Patiala shows. Unfortunately, the visitor don't see them anymore. As per reliable numismatists, who visited and found most of these rarities missing. A report in New York Times, February 1890, establishes bankrupt Maharaja Dilip Singh, the last heir of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, a bankrupt person who could not pay even the furniture he bought. Coin collections are in the habit of changing hands. Thousands of coins have moved from diggers, dealers, and auctioneers to museums and collectors like British museums, Sri Pratap Srinagar, Lahore, Gobindgarh, and Guru Nanak University Amritsar. Talking about 3,000 Sikhan collection in Guru Nanak University Amritsar, most of the students and even professors are unaware of the existence of the coin display in the complex. The building and department housing the collection has been given an obscure name. The name does not give any clue about the Sikh coin collection hidden there. During my visit in 2017, with the help of a friendly ex-professor, I was told by the caretaker professor that the last visitor was a Dr. Pannu from Toronto about three years ago. Phoenix Arts Museum and Bara Dari Patiala, Sikh Coin Facebook and Yahoo groups are doing a good job online to spread the word. We generally find Gurmukhi script on copper pasas of Sikh umpires with a call Sahi, Guru Nanak Ji, Vaheguru, Amritsar spelled as Ambarsar. Other symbols include peacock, Qatar or dagger points in string or burst of stars, flowers with or without stem, branches, tiger, lion face, trishul or trident, nishan sahib or flag, chatar or canopy. We find Har, Om, Shiv, Ram, Mundarka, Sahi, Sadguru, some in Devnagari script. Some Kashmir coins also had sword and shield and Diragazi Khan, had Fateh Gobind in Persian. Some individuals and unscrupulous dealers have tried to pass Sikh religious tokens with pictures of Guru Nanak, Mardana, Guru Gobind as genuine Sikh coins in order to make huge profits. Some Gurdwaras do make medallions or mementos to celebrate centeniers of Gurus or Khalsa, like this one made in Gurdwara Sahib, Quebec, Montreal. Scholar Hans Hurley generously provided all copyrights of his most comprehensive catalog. The earliest account of Sikh coins was by Khushwakt Rai, who was a Persian chronicler and a writer. 
in 1811 AD he wrote in tarikh e sikha that guru gobind singh issued a coin with the legend dekh dekh fate nusrat be darang yaft az nanak guru gobind singh but he did not provide any reference neither a seal or a coin of guru gobind singh has ever been found similarly mohammad latif in his history of the punjab states that guru gobind singh had a personal seal with the same legend as described by khushwakt rai and pujaris used to affix that seal on his hukam namas but no hukam nama of guru gobind singh is available with such a seal i think they both got confused with baba banda singh bahadur mentioning him as guru gobind singh since a similar legend was used by baba banda singh bahadur on his hukam nama written to sangat of jaunpur and also on his coins we shall discuss coins of baba banda singh bahadur later there's there's nothing that replaces touch and feel right when you look at the coin yourself right when you look at enough coins right you know okay the calligraphy of this coin is supposed to look in this manner or it's you know the is the uda or the era is supposed to be in this particular manner right or uh, uh, the texture of the coin is is supposed to be in this particular manner because the silver content when the coins were produced right were minted in the 1700s or the 1800s that silver content is different than the silver content today if you try to make a silver coin and a copper coin from today's met, uh, uh, metallurgy right you will not be able to copy the same uh, recipe right so a lot of a lot of the a uh, lot of them what they have done especially on um, fake and genuine coins right they have actually taken the old met, uh, metals and they melt it down and try to make uh, the new coins uh, the new rare the, the rare coins they try to fake them out by actually using the old metal so you actually got to understand right learn how to read the calligraphy touch and feel right for our audience Please tell when you take a coin in your hand can you figure out if it is a genuine or fake we have heard that there are many fake coins in the market look we have been in this line of business for a long long time so experience is main thing any features get caught like weight appearance but main thing is the experience that's the most important thing what is your opinion about forgeries in numismatics as a whole and then specifically for sikh coins also hmm a very interesting question this is a question which is uh, often asked by any any non coin collector when i talk to him so there is a saying in english which says imitation is the best form of flattery so it goes for the coins if forgeries are being made that means coins are in demand So now your question uh, uh, takes in against because sometimes this scares away the genuine collector. At, at present, we are not aware of the exact minting techniques which were used during those those periods. So anybody who tries to remake a coin can easily be caught because the tools now they are much sharper and they create more fineness on the dies than the tools which were used then. so that difference would always remain a uh, lot of people they try to uh, use new techniques to forge the coins but they are always caught with an expert eye so forgeries are not much of a problem to me no, i think so yeah at yeah at least till you are buying from a reputed dealer or somebody who who knows what he sells ek gal main aur dasanga i will tell you one more thing nowadays you can find many fakes in the sick coins and it's a very difficult task to distinguish the genuine from the fake we can research the coins weigh the coins study the calligraphy and determine the fakes and all these things are related to your experience in study if you have studied good just by holding the coin in the hand you can determine if it's a fake or genuine you can weigh and figure out the genuineness of the coin to some extent inal 
Also, you can study the coin with the magnifying glass and tell whether it is genuine or fake. From 1710 to 1730, Baba Banda Bahadur issued coins and they are available in a very limited quantity and they are not generally available. One of such coins is available with Sardar Saran Singh of Malaysia. And after that in 1765, Misuls or Sikh confederacies like Bhangis, Aluwali etc. issued their coins. After this, the coins of Maharaja Ranjit Singh appeared and he ruled till 1839 and these coins were in circulation even 10 years after his reign till 1849 because his descendants too ruled after him. There is a specialty of Sikh coins that they do not carry any image of the god or Sardar Ranjit Singh. All other coins you find, photos of whether it's Queen Elizabeth's or coins of any other country, they have photos of their kings and these coins do not have any photo of any king. This is a coin of Banda Bahadur that is around 1711, 1708 to 1711. We don't have the exact year for it. But uh, yes, it is supposed to have been minted after the Banda Bahadur took over Sir Hen and defeated the Mughal armed forces. Uh, the Gurmukta was passed in 1710 by Baba Banda Singh Bahadur. And uh, 1711 is when we found the first Sikh coin, right? So on that particular coin, uh, by the, all in Persian actually, because Persian was the key language during that particular period of time. And uh, it's year two, right? So. In my possession right now over here, I actually have the photograph of uh, Baba Banda Singh Bahadur year 2 coin, right? And uh, this is the first known Sikh coin um, for the Sikhs that was minted by Baba Banda Singh Bahadur in 1711. Now, why is it significant, right? Uh, the reason why it's significant is that uh, by minting Sikh coins, uh, you show sovereignty. You show that you are the leader, you show that you are the owner, and you show that um, now I'm actually uh, minting my own coins, I'm sh that shows that I'm in power, and that shows that now you can start trading, uh, whether it's uh, paying salaries or buying groceries or whatever matter it is, right? So this is the first uh, C coin that was known uh, to be uh, made available. Now, if you look at the history going forward, right, year three, right, another coin was issued in, in, uh, seven, in 1712 by Baba, by Baba Banda Singh Bahadur II, right, and uh, this coin, um, there, I believe there are six pieces known in the world. Six coins, the reason why any country mints Sikh coins or any coins of their nation is to show that they have a sovereign right on their land. So that's the first indication uh, that you are actually a leader. You own a piece of, of land that is your world, your country, right? So you can only issue coins once you have a sovereign nation. So a lot of the older generation understand that. Sikh coins tell about the sovereignty of the Sikhs. They tell that the Sikhs rule from. Afghanistan to Tibet. During their occupation, there was prosperity. Then we can say, from the Missile or the Sikh Confederacy's period, actually before that, from the period of Baba Banda Singh Bahadur, it continued till the time of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Then his descendants also ruled. We can say that the Sikh community's coins tell about their prosperity. They also tell about the value of their rule. You can also say that the rule of Maharaja Ranjit Singh was secular. Till the end of the reign of the Sikhs, there was prosperity. And the coins of the Sikhs tell that they had sovereignty.
It's a good effort that they are trying to start a museum in Govinder Fort. They will display Sikh coins. And I personally think it's a very, very good step. On the other hand, it's a very, very sad state of affairs because our own people don't know anything about Sikh coins. Now, the another sad part about it is I visited a few museums and uh, uh, I had an opportunity to visit the Shish Mahal Museum also at Patiala. Uh, it is rather unfortunate that when I saw the inventory in that museum, it does not properly display what type of coins are exactly there for everything. They, uh, it's prepared in such a shabby manner that anybody can replace those things and put anything else over there and nobody else, nobody would know. That is the worst part so of it. Do you believe some, there are some coins must be missing over there from the inventory well, or from the display? Uh, uh, this is something I cannot comment about. But I did not find the uh, coins as it was rumored that there are so many coins over there, there are around 30,000, uh, more than 30,000 Sikh coins over there and I could barely find a few hundred coins of the Sikhs. I want to tell one more thing about the coins, that in the quote of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, or rather in his harem. There was a Nach girl and her name was Mora. Because Maharaja Ranjit Singh couldn't issue coins in the name of Mora, he put peacocks on the coins, which later were called Mora Shahi. And these are very rare coins and very few people have these coins. And this history too people should know. There are certain coins in the year 1862 summer, that is 1805 uh, Christian era, AD, these coins have a sort of vegetative symbol on them, but they were termed as Mora Shahis and people believed that there was a peacock in it, Mora means peacock. So uh, unfortunately nobody saw peacock on it but they called it a Mora Shahi. When I was working on the book, and I was trying to take out the symbols from the book. Fortunately for me, suddenly I saw that there was a symbol of a peacock on it. It was so beautifully calligraphed within the script of the, within the legend of the, on the mind, that nobody could make out that it was a separate thing. They thought it was part of the legend itself. Yes, there are two peacocks on those coins. Mora was a combine of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. She was a dancer, court dancer, courtesan, which you, in other terms, what you say, courtesan. And uh, it is said that Maharaja Ranjit Singh fell madly in love with her. And uh, finally, he married her. And uh, Mora is said to have taken up a bet with someone that she will get the coin minted in her name. But since it was not possible, so she uh, arranged to put this uh, peacock symbol in, in a very, very unobtrusive manner. Amritsar coin, a square one from 1863. This is an Amritsar coin from 1882, again a square coin. This is half a point, a square, from Darjang, 
a very rare unique coin. This is a Lahore 1857 square coin, half coin, old Mohor, which is a fraction from the E series, 1889. This is an Amritsar gold mahal, which is half a fraction. Again, a very unusual collection. This is a Lahore mahal. Again, I'm trying to only show things which are unusual. We have lots more collection, but again, we are trying to maintain and just show, depict, which is something unusual. This is a Peshawar quarter fraction. This is a Multan, half a fraction from 1877. Now let's come to some tokens which are unusual. This is a Ranjit Singh silver token. And this is again a very unusual token of Granada Dev. These are uh, emergency coins of Multan. Multan. Uh, a couple of coins here, which are uh, quite unique. Okay. Like, for example, this first occupation of Multan. So these are also rare coins. Okay. Very difficult to get. These were uh, under the missile period. And, uh, but this is uh, one of the unique coins, Dera Ghazi Khan. Unique. Yeah, yeah I would say. Uh, I think British Museum has one, uh, another one. Similar, okay. uh, I don't know of any other collector who has a coin like that. For me, every coin is a unique, unique coin. <laughs> this is one of the smallest uh, silver coins of the Second Empire. Uh, it is a one eighth rupee or two on us. The coins of lower denomination were made in copper. So this is the uh, smallest silver coin of the empire. Smallest silver coin of the empire, very interesting. Um, and this is uh, like one eighth of one eighth, one eighth of the rupees. Because the rupee was equal to 16 hours, so this is 2 hours. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Very, very good condition. And at the same year, right, copper coins were actually minted in Najibaba, right, uh, by the Dao Khalsa. Right? And in my collection, I actually have Najibaba coins, uh, both in Persian language and in Gurmukhi language. Right? Gurmukhi language, uh, Najibaba coins were never known to exist until we found them by accident in, uh, in a dumb collection uh, last year. Dumb collection is a collection that were considered a junk box. Right? It was like a junk box and we were going through uh, that junk box just for fun. And we, there comes a uh, hole in the hole, right? My father and I detected it in the, in the junk box. It is Najibaba coin and is in uh, Gurmukhi inscription. In the last years of the reign of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, some coin issues had symbols like Ram, Om, the Trident, and etc. Many such symbols appeared towards the end of his reign. My name is Agat Singh. I'm 10 years old and I study and learn from Yuppie at Khalsa Community School. Last year, I learned about Sikh coins and Kaida from my father. And I got interested in our Sikh heritage and the Sikh coins history. So, I asked my father if he could buy some coins for me. And last year for my birthday, he did. 
He bought some sick coins from Pradeep Emmanuel of World Ancient Coins. And I like these copper basas because they have Gurmukhi legend and Nanak written on them. Here are some of my coins. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh This will be a very aggravating and sensitive question because while I was on tour to meet uh, various uh, collectors and dealers across the world, mm -hmm. I heard some uh, a few uh, special name given to Ludhiana, calling it Ludhiana Mint, and some people went as far as to say that there is a Sikh coin mafia. Uh, what would you say about that? Uh, I have never heard about the Mafia uh, and I don't think anybody here is capable of uh, trying to make a coin. Uh, it might be a little disturbing or agitating the comment for you when I say that I have been going around and meeting many people around the world about coins and not many of them but some of them did mention that. Uh, they have different names for fake coins. Some some people would say Ludhiana Mint. Other people will say Sikh Coin Mafia. What is your response to these kind of uh, allegations? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. About people. There is nothing like Ludhiana Mint except this is a brainchild of a very very depraved mind who is in Ludhiana itself because he is basically he's jealous of. He does not want to improve himself, rather bring others down. So he terms them as Lujana Mint. There is nothing like Lujana Mint. Yes, forgery and fakes is a part of numismatics. Not only Sikh numismatics. I, let me be candid. It's a part of numismatics as whole. I personally came across a coin of Shah Jahan, a gold mohar of Shah Jahan, beautiful gold mohar of Shah Jahan, which was forgery. I was fooled. Once someone gave, gave me a pictorial coin, this pictorial coin, and asked me to sell it. Well, I could not make out it was a forgery. So yes, that is, a, that is the worst part of this. But on the other hand, blaming each and everybody for all the forgeries is wrong. Yes, there are certain places, certain people. Yes, you can pinpoint them, but it's something you gradually come to know about. You learn about those things. No, it is, uh, it's not a, a practice that can sustain for very long because forgeries in due course come to right.